Hello, I'm Joe Savage from DevHQL.net, and today we are diving into an HTML and CSS tutorial about the basics of CSS. So in the previous tutorial, we went over the basics of HTML, and we created this basic structure here, and we're going to be using that in this tutorial so we can style some of it using CSS. So obviously the first step we're going to want to take is introducing some way to link CSS, a completely separate language, into our HTML. Now there are three main ways to do this, and we're going to go over all three in this tutorial. So the first one is having an external CSS file. This is probably the neatest method, it's the method used in most websites, it's the method I'm going to be using for the most part in this tutorial series. And pretty much all you do is you create a separate file called something.css, you then save this, and then you link this using a special element in the head section of your HTML document. So when the web browser goes in and reads your HTML file, it sees that element, it goes, aha, the CSS file is actually located here, it gets the CSS file, and then it applies all the stylings in the CSS file to your HTML. So to do this, obviously, firstly, you have to create the file. So I've gone ahead and done that. I've called mine style.css. That's quite a standard name. And I've put it in the same folder as my HTML file. And that's quite important for me. I have to specify the path of where it is in this tag that we're putting in our head section. Once you've created that, we're actually going to be putting the CSS in here a little bit later. For now, we're actually just going to leave it completely empty because we're just going to learn how to link it. Uh, so all you have to do is put one element inside this head section, and this is the link element. Now, it's an empty element, which means it's only represented by one tag, and we're going to talk a little bit about what we have to do with empty elements in different versions of HTML in just a second. And it also has a couple of attributes that we need to set, one of which varies depending on the version of HTML as well. So obviously the first thing we're going to do is just open up our triangular brackets. We're going to type link, the name of the element. And our first attribute is the rel attribute. And you're going to want to set this equal to style sheet because the rel attribute basically says, how is this related? Uh, what are you linking here? And we say we're linking a style sheet. And then the next attribute is the href attribute. And this is where you specify the path of the URL or wherever your CSS file is stored. In this case, because it's in the same folder, we can literally just write the name of the CSS file, which is style.css, and it will find that. Now, the last attribute, which I'm not going to be specifying, uh, well, I will be just to show you, but I'll be removing it in a second because I'm not using that version of HTML, but pretty much the last attribute is the type attribute, and in anything less than HTML5, you have to, be set, you have to set this to text slash CSS, and... Well, you can see why they removed it, really. It's not a whole lot of help, but it just shows the type of the style sheet that you're linking. So we're saying it's a text CSS file. Now, because this is an empty element, we uh, can close this using just a regular triangular bracket in some versions of HTML. However, you may wish to put a slash before that, and this slash is optional in all versions of HTML apart from the XHTML versions in which this is necessary to show this is an empty element. So I'm going to keep it there, I think it looks kind of neat, and I'm going to remove this type attribute because I'm using kind of a modern HTML, HTML5 kind of version in the way I teach you, so I'm going to remove that. So now I can assure you that the style sheet is linked. Uh, if we refresh the page, you actually won't see any difference because we haven't specified any stylings, but I assure you that it is working. Now the second method, so let's just temporarily cut this out, is called internal CSS, and essentially we just specify all of our CSS inside of our head section here. So we do this by using the style element, so we just open up a triangular bracket, style, again, in anything less than HTML5, you have to set the type attribute to text slash CSS, I'm going to remove that, and then we just close that, and then we're going to end our style element over here, and then we can specify our CSS in here, just like we specify the CSS in the style.css file if we're using the other method. So this is sort of useful in some projects where you just want to quickly link the CSS, you don't have to worry about specifying paths or anything else. Uh, and I can see why some people would use it, but it's not recommended for the most part. So we can take that out. And then the third method, really I don't recommend using for the most part. Uh, I guess sometimes it's sort of useful, but it, it just depends. And this is, you choose your elements, let's just say we want to specify stylings for our body, we then give it the style attribute, and then in here, we specify different stylings, and we just specify declarations, but obviously you don't know what they are, because we haven't actually learned how to write CSS yet, so that's coming now. So, let's just put back our link line, and let's actually start writing some CSS in our style.css file. 
So every time you start a set of rules in CSS, or a rule set is actually the terminology, that's what they're called, you have to specify a selector. And a selector is just a way of selecting a certain element or number of elements on the page that you want to style. So it knows what should I then put these styles that you're going to specify to. So in this case, uh, because our main aim is going to be setting the text color of this text here, let's just go ahead and style the body element. Now, we can do this just by writing body. And that is our selector right there. Just a body, and that's going to select our body element. Now we have some curly brackets, and inside these curly brackets, we just specify all the different stylings that we want to take place on the body element. So everything inside here, or all the lines inside here, are called declarations, and these just set certain properties to certain values. Now this is going to make more sense in a minute. So the first property we're going to learn about is the color property, and this sets the text color uh, inside that element. So in this case, it's going to set the text color inside the body element. Uh, you have to spell color the American way, so let's just write that. Color. And then the syntax of CSS goes that once you write a property, you write a colon, and then you specify your value in here, which we'll learn about in a minute, and then you put a semicolon afterwards to show that you've ended that line. And you can see my text editor actually put that in automatically. So this whole thing here is called a declaration. It's when you set a property to a value. And in this case, the value can be a hex color, an RGB color, or a word color. If you don't know about these, I'll just quickly go over them. A hex color is just three pairs of hex digits. So we can just say something like FF, 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 in which the first two represent red, the second two represent green, and the last two represent blue. Uh, you might want to look up hex colors if you don't fully understand them. I'm not going to explain them in great detail. But pretty much, if you want to set the text color of the body to something like, uh, I don't know, FFCC00, we can just go ahead, save our CSS file, make sure you've saved your HTML file with this link element, and then we can open it up, we can refresh the page, and you can see, wow, now we have this gold color text, because that's what FFCCOO is, it's this gold color. If we now go back to Sublime Text, or whatever text editor you're using, uh, let's just go ahead and demonstrate the other ways. So RGB color, uh, kind of similar, you write RGB, and then in brackets, you specify three values, um, so I've just written 0 in place of those values right now, and every value goes from 0 to 255, in which 0 is basically nothing, well it's not basically nothing, it is nothing, and 255 is the highest value, and again this goes red, then green, then blue. So uh, perhaps we want to set it to green, we could set 255 on green here in the middle, we could save that, refresh Safari, and we can see now we have this green text like this. Now the third method sorry, not the third method, the third color type is word, and this is very simply just a word color, so you could just write something like red, and you can save that, and we can refresh, you can see now our text color is red, yippee. So that is literally all the CSS styling we're going to go over in this tutorial. Um, obviously, mostly our time was taken up learning about all these linking methods, but you do need to know about those, and let's just quickly go over a bit of terminology related to all this CSS stuff, because it is quite important. So. This whole thing here uh, is called a rule set, uh, and then we have this thing here, whoops, this thing here is called the selector, this thing here is called the declaration, this part here is property, this part here is a value, again we've been over most of these, uh, and also I do want to talk about one more thing in relation to CSS as well. So you can see at the moment we've only got one declaration in here, we can have multiple declarations uh, under a selector in a rule set. I'm just trying to reuse this piece of terminology as much as I can to just get them ingrained in your mind. So what would happen if we actually did another color declaration below this one? So we have color red. What about below this if we set color green? Is it going to display red or green? Hmm, let's have a look. So if we went over to Safari and we refresh, it displayed green. Why is that? Well, it displayed green because CSS basically reads your document from top to bottom, and it prioritizes that. So the top is kind of the less important CSS, and that anything in the top can be overridden by CSS at the bottom. So in this case, because green has gone after red, green takes priority, and so it displays it as green. If we swap these around, and color green was at the top, and then we refresh the page, we can see the color of the text is now red. So that's as simple as that. Um, hopefully you should know a little bit about styling in CSS now. You just specify a selector. Sorry, whoops. A selector. And then you have property 
goes to a value, and again we have this colon here, and we have the semicolon here, and then this whole thing here is a declaration, and this whole thing here is a rule set. Now there is one more thing I want to go over before we end this tutorial, and that is the parent-child relationship in HTML. So basically, an element inside an element is called the element's child. So in this case, the title element is a child of the head element because it's inside the head element. And the head element is a child of the HTML element. In a similar way, the head element is called the parent of the title element and the HTML element is called the parent of the head element. Now, while this might all seem a little bit off topic, it's actually very, very important when we specify selectors because we can specify selectors uh, nested with child parent and there are all kinds of different selectors which we're going to go over in different tutorials because obviously in different situations you're going to want to select different things. So that is the end of this tutorial. If you want to know more about anything I've spoken about in this tutorial, if you're viewing on YouTube, the link to the related text tutorial is in this video's description. And if you're viewing on my website, the text tutorial is just below where I've embedded this video. So that's the end of this video and have a nice day.